In the previous video, we introduced the idea of an operator. Remember that an operator uh, is basically a machine. Um, it takes a function in and gives a function out. So function in, function out. Whereas functions take numbers in and give numbers out. So uh, what an operator really is is a function that in turn acts on other functions. And we said that, um, you know, that we mentioned that one operator that we're all quite familiar with is the derivative operator, d dx. And uh, the derivative operator, uh, along with many other operators, has a very, very uh, special characteristic um, that's quite useful when we try to apply it. And the same characteristic is going to apply to the Laplace transform, which is what we're uh, headed towards here. So um, if we have two functions, um, f of x and g of x, and we uh, want to add those two together and then do the derivative, Okay, so let's suppose I want to do the derivative of uh, f of x plus g of x. Um, the fact that the derivative is a linear operator, so d dx is a linear operator, linear, uh, yeah, linear operator, means two things. Uh, so the first thing it means is that if I want to do the derivative of two functions, added or subtracted, so this could actually be a minus in here as well, then all I really need to do is take the derivative separately of the two functions. So I can apply the derivative to f of x, apply the derivative to g of x, and then add or subtract afterwards. Okay, so that's one of the properties uh, that it means to be linear. The other is that if I want to apply the derivative to a constant times a function, okay, then the derivative operator can actually just bypass the constant. And so we get c times d dx of f of x. Now those are very important uh, properties and it turns out, um, you know, they're a little bit well, they're not at all unusual for operators, but they're extremely unusual for functions. So, for instance, if we were to look at the function uh, f of x equals x squared, and ask ourselves, is f of x plus y equal to f of x plus f of y, so in other words, if we're squaring a sum, is that the same as the sum of the squares? Uh, and so what we'd really be asking is, is x plus y squared equal to x squared plus y squared? And the answer is no. Okay, so in fact, uh, this property doesn't hold. You've seen other things like that as well. So if, for instance, if I have sine of a plus b, that's not equal to sine A plus sine B. Okay, so most functions do not uh, behave in, in what we call a linear manner like the derivative operator does. So um, this whole idea of linearity, um, of being a linear operator, is extremely important. And the reason it's important is because it allows us to do things like the following. Remember when we first brought up the function f of x equals x squared, um, we were able to make, we could say, well, we can make a table that tells us if we know the input, what the output is. So if the input's 1, the output's 1. Input of 2 gives an output of 4. Input of 3 gives an output of 9, and so on. So um, we can do the same sort of thing with derivative, with uh, the derivatives. So, for instance, if I had, I can make a table of y and dy dx, and so I can look at certain things and make a table of their derivatives. So, for instance, if my function is just one, y equals one, the derivative of one, of course, is zero. 
Um, the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And let's put a few others. The derivative of e to the ax for any value of a is a e to the ax. The derivative of, for example, sine of ax is a cosine of ax. And of course, the derivative of cosine ax is negative a sine ax. And most of us actually, if we've done much math, wander around with that table uh, sort of in our heads. Okay, and if we knew just that table, and then we understand the fact that the derivative is linear, then we can do things like this. If I want to know the derivative with respect to x, for example, of uh, say the function 5 e to the minus 2x plus 3 um, sine 4x, I can apply the linearity properties of the derivative and use the table above to figure out what the derivative is. So the first thing I know is that with that plus sign there, that I can put the derivative with each of the two terms. So that's the derivative of 5 e to the minus 2x plus the derivative of 3 sine 4x. And now, so that's the first property of linearity, that the, the derivative can split up among, across addition. And then it can also pass through constants. So this is now 5 uh, d dx of e to the minus 2x uh, plus 3 d dx of sine 4x. So what I've done is taken the original function that we wanted to do the derivative of, this thing, and I've been able to pass the derivative across to where it's only applying to some functions of the form that we have in our table. So the first thing we can do is we look at this, you know, this part of the table that tells us the derivative of e to the ax is a e to the ax. And I use that here to get 5. And then the derivative here is negative 2 e to the minus 2x because the a is negative 2 in that case. And then I've got plus 3. And then I do the same thing. I go up to the table. So um, I look here on the table. I'm doing the derivative of sine. So I look at this part. I'm circling in blue. Um, our value of a in this case is 4. So the derivative of sine 4x is 4 cosine 4x. All right? And so then I know that the final result is uh, negative 10 e to the minus 2x plus 12 uh, cosine 4x. Now, I've kind of dragged out there a process that you know how to do probably intuitively in some sense. But the real point is to illustrate the linearity to show that, first of all, I can take the derivative and apply it to each of the two terms here. And then at the next step, we can see that the derivative can pass through the constants here. Right? And then we're just applying it to the e to the minus 2x and the sine 4x and the values for those things we can get off of the table. So again, the derivative, it's a linear operator. And we can use the fact that it's a linear operator to uh, take the derivative of somewhat complicated expressions uh, using just a, a simple table of things that we know the derivative for. In the next video, we will finally now introduce the Laplace transform itself, which has been our goal.